ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಐ ಡಿಡ್ ಮೈ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ಜುವೆಲ್ಲಜಿ ಬಟ್ ವೈಲ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಷನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೈ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಷನ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ ಮೈ ಫಾದರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಮೈ ಪಿ ಜಿ ಮೈ ಫಾದರ್ ಸೆಟ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಎ ನರ್ಸರಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ದೆನ್ ಮೈ ಫಾದರ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎ ನರ್ಸರಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಹೈಯರ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ನರ್ಸರಿ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಹೈಲಿ ಎಜುಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನಟ್ ಟೀಚ್ ಎ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ವೆರಿ ರಿಲೆಕ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಐ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ವ್ಯಾನಿ ಬಿ ಹರ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಜುಲೋಜಿ ಸೊ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಐ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಮೈ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ವಿ ಗಾಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಹೈದ್ರಾಬಾದ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಹೌಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ರಿಟೈರ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ರಿಷಿ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಸೊ ದ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ವಾಚ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಟಿಪಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ರಿಸಿ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ನಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟೀಚ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಜಾಬ್ ವಾಸ್ ಟು ಟೀಚ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಂಡೇ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ದೇ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಬ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕೆಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಭುವನೇಶ್ವರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ವಿ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿವ್ಲಿ ಟು ಎಕಲಬ್ಯ ಟು ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಪಿ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವೆರಿ ರಿನೋವೇಟಿವ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಟ್ರೈ ಔಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಎ ಜ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಟ್ರೇಟ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಷನಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಇಸ್ ಟು ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ ಯಂಗ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಟ್ ದೆಮ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಕರಿಕುಲಮ್ ಬಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರಿಕುಲಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಹೋಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಿಯರ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಫ್ಲೈ ಎ ಪೇಪರ್ ಏರ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎನ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಯು ನಾಟ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸ್ಕೋಲ್ಡೆಡ್ ಯು ಪ್ರೊಬಬಲಿ ಬಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಸಿಬ್ಲಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪಿಯರ್ ಹೊರೆಜೆಂಟಲ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಡ್ಲಿ ಮಿಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ನಾವು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ವೇರ್ ವಾಲಂಟಿಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಎ ಥ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ನೇಮ್ಲಿ ಭಾರತಿ ಮಿಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ನಮಿತ ದರ್ ಟೂ ಮಿಲ್ಲೀಜ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಡಿಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರೀಟೈಪಿಂಗ್ ದೆನ್ ದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಶಿವಾಜಿ ವಾಸ್ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಷನ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಎ ಗ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ವು ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಎನ್ ಅಪ್ರೆಂಟಿಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಜೀವನ್ ಜೀವನ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಪಂಡ ಹು ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೀ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಅನುಸಂಧಾನ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಡಿಜಿಟೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್
relating to science and Odia languages. And naturally, we turned to started looking for the magazines. And we realized magazines are impossible, near impossible to get. And whenever we got access to the magazines, we decided not to collect only the science article, but the whole magazine. And that is how the concept of digitization came into mind. Simultaneously, we are working with a major lexicon in Odia language, in one of the major lexicons in Indian languages, actually, Purnachandra Odia Bhasa Kosha, which comprises seven volumes, almost 10,000 pages, and uh, one lakh 85,000 root words. So we, when we started thinking of preserving material, this is one of the things we touched first, because fortunately we had a personal set. My father had that, and from the childhood I remember everybody used to tell us this is the largest book in Oriya language. So we never touched it, but we admired it. And it landed with us as an inheritance of treasure. So we thought uh, such a great uh, job should be preserved and uh, the only method of preservation is digitization or by, or uh, electronic method. So we started uh, thinking of preserving Bhasa Koso electronically. We, when we want to wanted to digitize it, we explored the machine. We found it's way, way too expensive for us. So nearly 20 lakhs then. So it was actually beyond our capabilities. So we thought uh, to explore some other methods. And luckily we, that time we found a scanner, HP. HP scanner, it was transparent. So for the scanner, we have to um, turn the book. But for this scanner, the scanner is to be kept on the book. So we can see through what is being scanned. Front and back are all transparent and it's well mounted so you can be held in any position while scanning. It's a 4 scanner so we could scan only one page of the Vasakos at a time. That was a Royal Octavo book. What we did, we laid the book flat, put the scanner upside down on it pressed and scanned. Progress was slow. We got only about 300 pages a day. And uh, it was very helpful to at least scan the Bhasa Koso because Bhasa Koso, each volume is uh, very big in size. So, and the uh, volume we had, it was quite old. So, it uh, could have been very difficult for us to turn it upside down and scan it. So the Vasakoso scanning part was over. Then uh, we didn't know about the new, uh, I mean that useful software, scan teller, etc. Then we didn't know PDF uh, processing anything. Very little we knew, so, but we learned as we progressed. So Vasakoso was completed and started and completed in 2006. So each page we were uh, manually we were processing it. And uh, in uh, July, three volumes of uh, Bhasa Koso, we experimental basis, uh, three volumes were published for public and uh, we wanted to get the feedback from the public. So it created a lot of enthusiasm about the work as well as its contents. And the work was novel, nothing has been done for digitization in Odia. And Vasakosa itself had its own dynamics. Everybody knew about Vasakosa. Very few had seen it. We have been using this for a long time. This has a very checkered history, very interesting history, very important document. Took a long time in publishing during the war, 1930 to 1940. Yet it got published. But only a couple of hundred copies survived because the compiler was uh, killed very tragically. The whole uh, holding got mired in litigation and most of the copies were sold as uh, uh, raddi paper. So it's a rare document because of its contents and more so because of the non-availability. 
many of the copies that were sold had are in foreign countries because when Prahraj wanted to raise money, he approached the British government who took it for some many of their universities. So it's a rare thing, but sought after. So we thought uh, we will, we announced that the all seven volumes we could complete within December. But by November, we complete uh, seven volumes and in November 13, uh, we actually 2006, November 13, we had a very small program and we published it um, publicly. And uh, um, interesting is during that time, we got a threaten from the original uh, Prahara's family that you are doing uh, illegal works and there still there is copyright. But copyright was not there. Because although the copyright expired in 2005 January before we started working on the digitization, the family of the compiler claimed rights over it and went into litigation, which created a lot of publicity, good and bad. Starting from 1811 to 1945, that was the Pramoda Vidhan. So we collected some 27, around 27 dictionaries. Uh, after 1811, the next was 1843, the three volumes of dictionaries by Amos Sutton. That time, the third volume which was uh, considered as the third volume of Amos Sutton was not the third volume of Sutton because that was the Sadhu Vasakta Vidhan which was not written by uh, Amos Sutton but all the literatures, they thought it was the third volume of uh, um, Amos Sutton. And in Kasipur, there was a primary school, very old one, and they had very many, many old books. So one of our colleagues, Jivan Babu, he went there and he got those. And the third volume of Amas Sutton was there. So we could got it from there and we replaced it, Sadhu Vasatta Vidhan, with the third volume of Amas Sutton. So, almost all the major dictionaries between 1811 and 1942, we scanned or got scans from abroad. First five of those were not in India at all. We had to get it from either British Library or US libraries. Fortunately, they were very cooperative and they complied with our request as economically as possible. So, in 2008, we brought out a CD with uh, all the dictionaries. So, total 28 dictionaries we collected and had a CD there. What we did, we added indexes to it so that one can search easily with uh, PDF links. During that time, a proposal from Megan Prashar, a wing of Department of, uh, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, they had a proposal that uh, to collect um, science articles which was published that time. That period was 1850 to 1950. Those periods in magazines, newspapers, any scientific articles were published. That was the, we have to collect it. So we started uh, browsing newspapers and uh, magazines. And uh, that time we found ki all the ma magazines, it's very hard to get it. And whatever magazines is uh, there, it is in very bad condition and they need preservation. So, so it, uh, we can say that our major digitization program started from there only. By then, we are already feeling the limits of our uh, scanner. It was slow, bulky, quality was reasonable, good even, but it was very slow. So we started experimenting with uh, camera based setup because commercial set setup were way too expensive. Around 2008, we succeeded using an ordinary point and shoot camera of Canon, which had a remote shooting facility. That means we could uh, take time based photographs from a computer. That made things very simple and we also discovered an open source processing software called Scantailer, which is excellent. 
Unfortunately, the camera is outdated. Is not men. Canon stopped manufacturing that or giving that facility. Scan teller, nobody is coming up to maintain it. Then we came for books. When we talk about printed books and magazines in Odia, it dates back to about 18, uh, 1807 or 8. First a Bible, then in 1811 there was a dictionary, more like a word book for administrators as well as uh, preachers of the missionary group. These were all. Printed at uh, Sri Rampur in Bengal, which was a big place for missionary activities, and a press was there. Slowly, English schools started in Odisha around 1820. Textbooks started being written again by mostly missionary people. James Lacy, Amos Sutton. were some of the names who contributed a lot in translating english textbooks into odia or developing dictionary in odia grammar books as well as dictionaries books uh, we started in 18 past uh, books maybe 18 1222 it's continuing i mean even uh, recent books also we are doing By 1840s, these things got very standardized, and 1840 between 1840 to 43, there was a large three-volume dictionary, English to Odia, Odia to English, and Odia to Odia, as well as a grammar book. By 49, magazine publishing started again by the missionaries, and the first three magazines. 1849, 1856, and 1861 were all three by the missionaries, but only a few copies of the second one is available. Prabodh Chandrika, published in 1856. Other two magazines are just not available. 1860s was a very difficult time for Odisha. First, there was a massive famine. the famine was more man made than natural because there were plenty of uh, enough food stock but the reporting from the ground up was bad the local administrators not belonging to orissa did not want to report shortage of food so that they don't look bad so british never knew the real picture of the famine and there was a massive Deaths. Then also there was an assault on Odia language. A group of people from other states, Bengal primarily, who had cornered most of the lower jobs in the administration, education, etc., declared that Odia is not a separate language. It should not be taught in the schools, and that created a lot of. Uh, resentment as well as uh, concern among odia literary people and by then starting 1840s and 50s literary activity had been picking up as well as nationalistic activities particularly three people madhusudan das or madhu babu fakir mohan and radhanath rai two were literary one was uh, socio political Also, a literary figure, Madhu Babu, who was called the Grand Old Man, Kula Bhutha, led the fight, and a lot of people joined in. So all this started churning, were reflected in the literary activities, and it materialized in 1866 in the form of Utkal Dipika, that's a periodical, weekly periodical, tabloid. which was run by the odia odia people initially printed on uh, stones lithography because the missionary press did not cooperate after a year and a half the missionary 
is realized that this is not going to go away. So they opened up the mission press to print it so that they can take advantage of the commercial aspects. What Utkal Deepika did was in first it raised consciousness about what's happening in Odisha among the ODS as well as the British administrators. And a lot of remedial action were initiated. Although it was more in form of a newspaper, it also carried long articles, literary articles, small views and opinions. Literary magazine, purely literary magazine in Odia, started in 19, 1873, Utkal Darpan. Some copies became available more recently. And that was a very high class literary magazine carrying articles on various aspects, including science. And one of the most prominent writers was Madhusudan Rao, better known as Bhakta Kabi, who created a, his own brand of religious, philosophical literature. And he wrote some very lucid prose as well as poetry. Slowly publishing picked up lots of newspapers and magazines started appearing as well as disappearing. Utkal Deepika was one of the longest running thing from 1865 to 1936 and uh, that held steady. Uh, Utkal Deepika is also a very sad story because number volume 1 and 2 and 3, first 3 volumes, only one set was available. It was in uh, Utkal University library. Somebody has stolen it. Everybody knows who has stolen it. And we have seen the second volume. First one is now disappeared. Second volume is still there. But um, unfortunately, it has not come to the public. It is in still there. Maybe. Mm. So, and uh, other magazines, we could get some from uh, museum library, then some from national li the state library, few are there. The first uh, published magazine, which is Kujibara Patra, nobody has seen it, okay. That Sadhusundar Das was the editor and nobody has seen it. The next one was the um, Gyanaruna Arunodha. It was in 1856. Uh, 1843 to 1856, the first which is available now is Prabod Chandrika. So, that was the first uh, and, and we got a science article from the first issue of Prabod Chandrika. And the editor uh, editorial is there that we are uh, not publishing this magazine for, uh, I mean, propagating uh, religion and this thing. We want to develop the scientific attitude of the person. In 1856, also the editor was thinking about uh, scientific attitude. In 19, 1897, a major magazine started publishing Utkal Sahitya. That was uh, another milestone because it also had a very long life running into the 1940s and created uh, a lot of new writers and newer areas of literature became covered in that. We started collecting Utkal Sahitya. That was the major, it was published in 1897. Uh, it is a major literature uh, magazine. But unluckily, volume third and fourth, we couldn't get it. It is available only in Santiniketan now, Santiniketan library. We tried uh, in many ways, we approached many people. But uh, we failed. So, uh, Utkal Sahitya starting from volume 1 to 43, except third and fourth volume, total is there. Then there were smaller but very important magazines like Mukur, Satyabadi, Sakar, and so on till about uh, independence time, Sankha and um, later on Jankar and uh, several others came up. So, we till now, we have collected uh, magazines and uh, newspapers total more than 100 numbers during 1850 to 1950. In the meantime, book publishing also picked up specialized books in all language, all areas of literature appeared. 
presses, more and more presses, uh, printing press got installed. One notable area of activity was Bamanda, that's a princely state in the Samalpur region, which had its own printing stuff, own postage stamps, own telegraph, railways, and all that. The kings were themselves literatures uh, with a lot of contribution to the Odia literature. So, Bamanda held a very special place. And they also patronized a lot of publications. Sambalpur Hitaishini, a magazine from that area, contributed a lot from that area because initially Sambalpur area was part of the central provinces, in this speaking. Similarly, in the southern Orissa, Gajapati area was in the Madras presidency. And uh, Odia kings were there, Odia landlords were there, who were very much involved in Oriya nationalism, but people could not study Oriya. They had to read all Telugu or other languages. But in 1936, all these were coalesced, whatever, most of it, into the state of Odisha, and the language again got naturally another boost. 1944, the Utkal University was established. Before that, high school examination was conducted by Patna University. Papers were either in English, mostly in English. But slowly after Utkal University got established, Odia medium really got a, um, a sound footing. So through this, books became published. Short story, among the earliest short stories in Indian languages was from Odisha. Fakir Mohan was a pioneer in many areas, novel, short story, satire, in satirical writings as well as uh, almost documentary writings are legendary. Short couplets he wrote on personalities of the time called Utkala Brahmanam, which he kept on revising to add newer and newer people, which gave, gave some real insightful views on current personalities of all aspects. So, we started collecting magazines and it is very dim, I mean hard task. Uh, we went to Katak, we went to Talcher, we went to Nuaga and in Bhubaneshwar also. Then in Katak, one retired uh, income tax officer, um, see Gopal Chandra Nanda. He has, uh, he has in his personal collection many, many magazines and the particular one is uh, Baleshwar Sambad Bahika, which is not available in state archive also. And uh, interesting one is, in 1920, a magazine was published specifically for children and we thought ki Janamamu is the first children's magazine. No, it was... Uh, I am forgetting the name. Panchamruta. Panchamruta is the first children's magazine published in Odisha, uh, Odia, specifically for children. And like that, um, then there Paricharika and Asa, these were specifically women's magazine. So then also, like um, other languages, Odisha also were having specially magazines for. Um, new literates, magazines for children, magazines for women. But a lot of things are not just available. Archiving was poor. People did not save magazines particularly or newspapers were out of them. But the major problem is the copyright. Because many people have uh, already died and their children they are not interested to give it, not interested to digitize it, not interested to keep it for posterity. Fortunately, a lot of newspapers and magazines could be saved because British government required all publications must be submitted, a copy of all publications must be submitted to them. And there were persons appointed who would scan through them, translate relevant portions, keep track of their enemies and friends. 
and also the local problems. And there was a translator's office which housed all the copies of this literature. When the independent when independence came, somehow the new government, the independent Odisha government, didn't uh, wanted more space and wanted to discard all these magazines and literature. Fortunately, two literary persons were in charge of the translations office. They carried everything to Utkala Sahitya Samaj and that became a very rich library. But again, the misfortune is almost everything is lost now by the present generation. Last few generations have just not bothered. They never understood the importance of that and a lot of valuable material has been lost. But whatever has been there is there. Everybody felt the need to protect, make it available because many were only single copies, even then with pages missing. So after 2008, we were considering what to do. That is where when our science writing interest came up and we wanted to make a compilation of science articles in Odia language and started collecting magazines, found the difficulties and started scanning the whole magazines. And that became very challenging as well as interesting. At the same time, we had been talking to whosoever would listen that you should also start this, particularly the engineering institutes, universities, most people either were not interested or too scared or um, whatever. But NIT Raurkela, National Institute of Technology Raurkela, they had a progressive director as well as a library scientist who wanted to do it. So they purchased the expensive camera scanner, automated. And what we did, we carried all the books from Bhuvaneshwar, went there, Raurkela, me and my colleagues, showed them what to do, how to do, and our books got scanned there. We concentrated on the magazines. It was a very good uh, arrangement. Then they built a website where the books were uploaded. Magazines we started dis distributing on uh, physical optical media, CD, DVDs. In 2012, we had completed scanning all, more, almost all available Odia magazines up to 1950. And we released almost 32 GB of data. We released on uh, seven DVDs, calling the a magazine collection of Odia literature. That was a big work. Also the science writing, work got compiled into a digital form and uh, was released around 2010-12. Magazines were also getting harder and harder to get. We started uh, digitizing books. Initially it was easy in one sense. There were plenty of out of copyright books available. Not all, but many. So we didn't have to bother about uh, asking people permission and all that. And we continued doing that and slowly we got into under copyright books where we could reach the authors or where we, they become untraceable. Many authors, families have also become untraceable. We took a risk chance, gave a disclaimer that will stop it if the author's family wants, but we are doing it for the sake of Odia literature. Fortunately, we had very, very, very few disturbances. We had a couple of unpleasant incidents, but by and large, it was very well supported. But the second problem cropped up. How do we distribute the books? Magazines have a natural limit. So many volumes, so many years, it started, it got closed. But books are open-ended and thousands and uh, thousands of books are there. Obviously, website would be a natural choice, but we didn't want to get into it. Creating a website 
ऑल्डो नॉट वेरी इजी रीजनेबल इजी बट मेंटेनिंग इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट एंड अ लॉन्ग टर्म पर्सपेक्टिव हैड टू बी टेकन वी स्टार्टेड इंटरेक्टिंग विद द गवर्नमेंट व्हिच वी हैड लिमिटेड अर्लियर and the government was very enthusiastic and wanted to create a big website and they did but it is uh, was very very bad and um, there are a lot of other problems so we decided to start working on our website and odia bibhabo name was coined and during 2017 november 17 to be precise we launched the website and uh, development continued till about uh, january 2018 when it became more or less full fledged initially all the magazines were uploaded so that was a big thing as well as certain particular resources like the bhasha kosha and there's a very important document called siddhanta darpana comprising astronomical computation of a local astronomer patani samanta then there is a celebrated geeta gobinda these were showcased in the website along with the magazines dictionaries and some books we also had an interactive uh, dictionary of about 60000 common words both in english and odia we had almost 10000 biographies of uh, odia people which was in a searchable format added on that with our low cost equipment handmade equipment and volunteer workforce we still produce about 5000 pages a week would like to travel and hopefully the corona situation will improve because that has been a big damper for the last two years uh, some of the university particularly revenge we have been very involved with them from the beginning after they became the university earlier it was a college our own alma mater and most important college of uh, odisha again uh, throwing throw back to the famine of 1860s so whatever it is we have made several attempts there and they have also announced many many projects on digitization but nothing significant has come out of it that is unfortunate government is still on cooperative or even hostile because very very important books are lying in government libraries which they are not touching and not well maintained at all not even a catalog nor are they allowing us to do it so and if we start raising our voices it <laughs> gets back to us Uh, bites us in the back but um, it's not a contentious issues that we want to raise but it's more of a hope that that should she there is a digitization program of the government there is a website odia virtual academy but they are very poor archive is digitizing a lot of material and they are but they are not processing nor are they making it available to the public lossy pain एलाइट का खड़ा है हां तेरे में हमें एलाइट रे व्यवहार करूंगा सुपर ए अनुसार व्यवहार स्कैन कर ले इसी तरह से कई बार छोटा है सामने आ जाए 